Hi, my name is Benedict for Higher Hertz. In this video, uh, we are looking at all the steps of putting together a song. So, subtitled from beat to release. Uh, there are certain things we're not going to cover here because we're going to break them out into other video article combos. As I've said, there is an article here. Sometimes it takes a couple of days to publish, so if the link's not there, give it a couple of days. The article will be uh, able to convey some information a bit better than the video and vice versa. So please, I encourage you to look at both. This is a pretty big subject with a lot of moving parts. So I would encourage you to take your time with it and to read slash watch a few times. I see people doing these things far too fast and cutting too many corners. Uh, and they might go, oh, well, it doesn't matter. And it's like, well, okay, if it doesn't matter. But then they're out there promoting like it matters. So I would really encourage you to, to take the time and to get things right. Getting things right is not about being boring or ruining your creativity. If you've got a better way of doing it, brilliant. But if your better way of doing it is merely a way of trying to cut corners and get away with out doing it right, then you're just shooting yourself in the foot. And, you know, nobody with a bullet hole in their foot can walk, let alone run. So let's dig in. The first thing that we've got to look at is that, unfortunately, we have to overcome a fair amount of bad information, bad advice, bad truisms. Yes, the door makes doing this stuff amazingly easy. When I started out in the late 80s, there was an awful lot more effort involved. And uh, sometimes with the studio that I was in, uh, the boss would let me do stuff out of time with bands. And it was the only way they could get something recorded. Yeah, there were four track cassette players out there, but oh, nasty. Uh, so going into a studio was the only way. And there the musician focused on what they were good at, which was strumming and singing. And the mix engineer focused on what they were good at, which was the recording, not that I was ever great at recording, but the recording and the mixing and what have you, and the end of the, the session, generally they were sent home with a rough tape, and if there was the investment there, then they could get a, an actual mix, normally at a later stage. Generally, you didn't want to do a proper mix with the band in front of you because everyone's going, turn that up! And it's like, all the faders are at like plus 48 dB and it's not working. So Again, what we're looking at here is a solid process, breaking it into the parts and working out what we need to do to get the best chance of having the right people like our song. So the parts. The first part is most commonly the music. Now, people, especially in the rap, trap, hip hop, whatever um, world, tend to call it a beat. That is, that is a mistake. Please get out of the habit of doing that. Uh, because a beat is a fraction of a bar. If we're in 4-4, four, four, we've got four beats in that bar. So if you're saying, I want a beat, then you're actually asking for a quarter of a bar. Uh, and more experienced musicians will not see you well that way. And while you may go, oh, but I only want to, to hang with other, you know, like rappers, dude, and they're all that matters, eh, just pick, pick your arguments very carefully. It's called a music bed. It's the music that sits underneath. You then got your lyrics. If you don't have lyrics, you really don't have a song. Your lyrics and their delivery, the singing, which is your next part, are the song. Your music bed is not the song. Your lyric and its delivery, they are the song. And then it all comes together with mixing. See mixing as being as important an element as everything else. You know, it's kind of like uh, Van Halen without Eddie. You need to have Eddie in the band going whittle, whittle, whittle to make Van Halen work. And then finally, there's mastering, making sure that, you know, everything is nice and tidy. Digging in, the first thing is the music bed. The music bed, as I've said, is commonly misnamed a beat. When you're working with professionals, there are terms for things, and those terms are quite specific and they help us to know what we're dealing with. And so misusing terms merely makes you look silly. You might go, oh, well, I'm really cool. I remember I was in a music store back 91, maybe, 1991, 
And uh, a lot of the people in there kind of knew each other. We knew of each other and what have you. And suddenly this group of three or four guys come in and you had to go downstairs to get to the high tech stuff, the keyboards. And um, and they're coming down the stairs talking really loud. Hey, yo, yo, yo. And all this kind of stuff. You know what? Everybody in the room just looked at each other and laughed. Nobody spoke to them. Normally it wasn't uncommon for somebody to, to speak to somebody across the room as we're trying bits of gear and what have you. Nobody spoke to these guys because, quite honestly, they, they were just too stupid. Um, and the moment they left, everybody else in the room just burst out laughing. And the people in that room were in bands. Um, it was not uncommon for me to uh, run into people from, um, uh, well, probably the most well-known uh, now would be Powderfinger, um, so, you know, that they were the people who were in stores. And, and when these people came in and they were all like, hey, yo, 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 this kind of stuff, super loudly trying to prove what big men they were, all they did was look stupid to people who were actually doing the real thing. Don't go down that path. So it's a music bed. Righto. you got to choose that carefully. There are a couple of reasons why. Sorry, I'm working from a script far more than I normally would here. Otherwise, we will have some... Problems and bits pieces missed out. The uh, the first thing that we need to look for is uniqueness. And I know that so many people go, oh, but I ain't got no monies and, and so I've got to download stuff. Okay, we, we got to do what we got to do. Uh, but the thing is you still need to make sure that yours is going to stand out. If you take what's called the low-hanging fruit, the things that you find super easily, guess what? Everybody's found it just as super easily as you and just grabbed it. Which means that if you take this music bed, lay it down, put your stuff on top of it, then chances are there are another 10 or 20 people out there who've used exactly the same piece of music. Which leads us to the next potential problem with that. A lack of uniqueness is already seeing people getting pinged. It may not be legally or morally right or fair, but one of those 20 people is as likely to go out and claim ownership of that, even though it was free for all, and suddenly your songs get pinged because somebody else is bogarting it. It might not be right, but it's happening. There are, there are quite a few instances now of people being pinged for using things that were actually open for usage. Just don't put yourself in that position. Find something that is unique. The ideal is always going to be that the music is built for the lyric. I know what I'm putting together here was done the other way round, but very much the ideal piece of music for your song is once you've got the song, you may have done a, a rough playing it, strumming it on the piano or, or whatever, uh, against just a basic drum machine, and then somebody builds up a piece of music to match what your song's actually about. So it moves with your song rather than being just jammed together. I hear too many things that are just not cool that way, and it ruins the song. It ruins the ability of the story to be told because they don't match. So try to get uniqueness, A, so that there aren't 20 other people so who've got essentially the same song as you, that one of those people can't bogart your song off you, in which case you are, well, into the road on that one. Technical information should come with the song, the backing track. The uh, music bed, if remotely professional, should come with certain pieces of information. And this is so incredibly rare. So if you're downloading something, this information is not there, consider not downloading this. If you have paid money for this, then don't pay money for it until they provide this information. You need the tempo. That's generally these days a pretty simple BPM. This track is running at, well, in my case, 107 BPM. Without that information, it's much harder to put that into your door to work with it. Get that piece of information. If it's a piece that changes tempo through, then the person really should provide a tempo map, which is a MIDI file of those tempo changes, which means that it can import it into your own door and suddenly everything will match. That's really, really important. The other thing that should be provided as standard is the key and scale. So is this in C major? Is this in C major Dorian? Uh, not saying that is just, 
it would indicate that the person who's made it has no idea what they're doing. You don't want to ally yourself with people who have no idea what they're doing if you hope to get somewhere. While it may seem too cool to be too cool for school, the problem is the too cool for school kids end up never really going anywhere at all. And if that's your plan, great, do it. But the Ramones were an awful lot more intelligent and savvy than they play acted on the surface. The other one is mastering. Here's the backing that we're gonna use here. But a lot of you are gonna go, yeah, but it's not very blammin' man. And you would be more likely to grab it if it sounded like this. That's mastered. That's pretty aggressively mastered. Uh, but that's been mastered in a way that just the backing sounds great. And while it does sound blammin', the problem is if I try to mix vocals against that, I'm not going to have any space and we will actually not win. So it's really important. If you're looking you know, on somebody's list of tracks that they have for sale, uh, yes, fair enough, they may well present them in that mastered kind of a way, but when you take that bed, especially if you've paid, what should come across is an unmastered mix, which will commonly be somewhere like 6 dB down. There is no rule, uh, but just as so long as it's not clipped and is not being compressed, compression and, and the mastering stuff will simply make that bed close to unusable because you'll never really get your bits to balance. So what we're going to do here is take that mastered music bed and actually get rid of it because it has no place in, in our work. And then quality. A lot of people are just ripping or downloading MP3s. Ugh. But bear in mind, if we start with poor quality, we can't improve it. This isn't like Blade Runner where they zoom, 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 or NCIS where they zoom, 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 and uh, pictures that are like pixels this big suddenly turn into as clear as my face. That's garbage. It doesn't exist at all. So if you start with poor quality music beds, and I've had them, then the mix engineer, well, where I've had them, I've had to either pretend that's not happening and just sort of, you know, or I have to come up with some kind of a munge to make that seem like it's a creative choice. And sometimes we can get lucky and it works nicely. Other times it's just like, this sounds poor. And I'm not pedantic about stuff. It's not like, a, oh no, there's one, there's one like frequency missing and blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, if something sounds poor, we can never make it anything but poor. We can try and pretend to make it sound worse, like it was a decision, but often that just doesn't really bring the magic that you're hoping for. Now we'll skip that bit. Microphones. You're going to need a microphone to do this. There is so much garbage out there about microphones. Simply put, there are two types of microphones. There's a dynamic and a condenser. They both take in signal. Now people will tell you that you must get a condenser. Largely they tell you this because they look sexier. You know, there's the old fashioned Elvis type microphone and uh, people go, oh, well, if I get that, then I'm gonna be pro. Now, if you get that, you've probably made a fool of yourself. Yes, a condenser, well, a good quality condenser can and will sound better, but only if you use it right. If you don't use it right, it will sound worse. And I've been sent a lot of vocals from cheap condensers that sound horrid. Please do not go down the condenser road. If you're watching this needing to learn stuff, you need the type of mic that's designed for this kind of work, which is called a dynamic. The dynamics followed the condensers in, in uh, technology history. And what the dynamic does is solve pretty well all the problems of using a condenser. They are physically a lot tougher. When you see somebody on stage using a microphone, it is going to be a dynamic. The Shure SM58, which is the like the standard mic on you see on most stages, black with a silver ball, that is a really, really tough mic. So if you don't own a mic, that's probably what you should buy. If you don't quite have the budget for it, and they are pretty cheap, then my strong recommendation is a Behringer Ultra Voice uh, XM8500. That's what you're listening to right now. And the vocal that we're going to do here was recorded on that just this morning. It's cheap as chips. Uh, and 
that is very robust. The idea of these mics is that they reject a lot of signal behind themselves, so they reduce room sound dramatically, whereas a, um, a condenser will suck in the room and you're just left hearing room. And there is no way to get rid of that. Uh, so please get yourself a dynamic microphone and if you buy well in the first place, either the Shure SM58 or this little uh, Behringer XM8500, which is a clone of the Shure mic, that will last you pretty well a lifetime. And then you can complement with fancier mics down the track. With your mic, it needs a preamplifier because the signal from a microphone is like tiny, tiny, tiny. You can't hear it. It needs to be pumped up. But you can't do that with anything other than a mic pre because they're designed to work together. You can get USB microphones. So you plug them into your USB port. You do not want one of those. If you if that's all you have lying around already, use it. But the quality of the preamps and the equipment in there is poor and you can pay the same amount of money as it costs to buy a, uh, the kind of mic that I'm talking about, like the Behringer, uh, and a, a simple audio interface, which has a far better quality mic pre in it, will be about the same price as buying some sort of fancy, you know, looks like Elvis or Frank Sinatra dribbled on it kind of thing. And it will sound infinitely better as well as lasting an awful lot longer, because a lot of those uh, USB mics are so lightly built that you start to have problems. So, strongly buy real stuff. You will need an audio interface, as I say. My advice there, again, if, if you have one, great, use that. If you don't, then the um, Audient Evo 4, it is physically a bit lightweight, but it is brilliant. I ended up with one kind of by accident, and I've been using it for over two years, non-stop mixing. It's running all day, every day, uh, and all of these podcasts, um, sorry, screencasts are done on that. So I'm not saying I will, yeah, but I wouldn't use them. This is exactly what I'm using, and they are great. Go down that path, please. The next one is wall padding, vocal booths, and weird shields. No, just no. Do not do them. You only need them, as I said, if you are silly enough to have bought a condenser microphone that is not meant for the purpose that you're using it for. Wall padding, which is like putting sound absorbent garbage all over your walls. Just don't do it. Your room will sound weird. And once you've got something that sounds weird, you can never get rid of it. I get sent things where it sounds like somebody was singing inside a cupboard. And I sort of asked what was going on. I was like, oh, well, I went in the cupboard and hung towels. And it's like, can we do that again? Because I can never make that sound nice. It'll always sound creepy. Not good creepy, bad creepy. So unless you want people to actually have the impression that you are singing to them from a cupboard with um, towels around your head, do not do that. The same with those shields, those wraparound shields for microphones, they do more damage than good. If you've got yourself a um, dynamic microphone, don't cup it, as in don't hold it like this, hold it so that the back end of the ball is breathing and it will cancel out the other sound that's coming to you. So all that stuff, don't waste your time or money on it. If you stand in the middle of a room um, or a little forward closer to one wall, then it will largely get rid of the bounce. And because a dynamic is a little less sensitive, then you'll keep it a little closer, but not too close. You wanna keep it about here and about this far out. So about here, not down here. If you do this, then you'll end up with lots of all over the mic and that's not nice and well we can minimize it I had some in here which I've minimized never quite goes away it always sounds kind of muddy whereas up here about six inches from your nose and slightly above a couple of inches above and and out there's a sweet spot in voices they tend to sound a little bit brighter and clearer bingo hold your mic up here which is part of why rappers got into the habit of holding their mics up here. Partly because it was like a boxer thing with the mic that came down, but partly because it helped clarify their, well, less than clear voices. Cool, that's the technical stuff out of the way. Now, the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is put our 
music bed into our door. Exactly how that happens is very much going to depend on your door, but we'll run through the basics. You should have the information that I spoke about before, and the first bit of that is what the tempo is. Strong advice, put your door to the tempo of the bed that you're bringing in. This was composed in reason I, I threw this together. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this, and I got some nice feedback on it, oddly enough. Uh, but I bounced it out so we could bring it in. Uh, so I set the correct tempo exactly, and then I drag and drop this in and make sure that it goes to the very edge here, which is bar one. See, we're at one, 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 one with zero seconds. Don't leave it out here somewhere, here. That's where you want it to be. People talk about leaving pre-roll and what have you, and yeah, that, that made sense back in the old days when we needed a bar for our synthesizers to actually change patches, but it's a non-issue now, so don't waste the time and space, because then you'll have like all this spare time uh, space on the front when you go to export. You don't want it. Push it to here. If you are correct, wherever you go, see here, the first bit of the bar is always right there. Easy as. If you have been unwise enough to deal with somebody who doesn't give you the proper information, then it is hard. In which case I would say, and this takes a lot of time and trouble and is possibly not worth it, then zoom in, find the first beat. Let's say here that this is the first beat. Sorry, I better turn snap off. Um, so you'd have your snap, you'd go to there, and then you would I better put that on, otherwise we will have we'll have some hassle. So we're snapped to there. Yeah, let's go quarter. Let's say that was the first beat and there was just some whizzy stuff before. Then we would actually pull that to there, pull this music bed to one, and then keep adjusting our tempo here until later in the piece it was still in time. <laughs> And we go, okay, yeah, it's still in time the whole way through. That only works if there isn't a, if there aren't tempo changes all the way through the middle of it. Um, but at least it'll, you know, it'll get you there. And then you can go back and put this, drag this out. Yep, there's nothing there. Push that back to your one. That will get you there, but it is not as easy as it sounds. The Better option in that case is just to set a tempo. My default tempo here is normally 120 BPM, and I will import, make sure that any kind of uh, stretching or what have you with audio is off, and uh, then we're good. So, and uh, then you just use your door as a scratch pad or like tape. Nothing is locked to anything. Uh, it's It will work so long as you do what you see here, which is that each of my vocal parts starts right on bar one. See here? That's all dead silence, but it starts on bar one. So that when it's imported somewhere, especially if you're sending out to another mix engineer, if let's say you just had this floating here, this floating here, it's virtually impossible for him to know where to put that. Whereas if each one of these tracks starts on the one, then everything just goes on the one and everything will be exactly where it should be. You can see this is all chopped up simply because I've gone through and done little edits to get rid of some of those plosives and some breaths. Uh, that's all that is doing. Um, I don't go overboard on it, but it's done. Uh, we won't fuss too much on that. And now you've got to deliver your vocal. You will have your music bed playing. Remember, we don't want that to be the mastered music bed, if at all possible. It just wants to be the music. It needs to breathe. Now, this is really important. We get our microphone, we put it in the right place, and we sing our vocal, our lead vocal, from beginning to end of the song part of the song. We do not want to sing four lines and stop and then sing another four lines and stop. While compiling is a doable thing, uh, and I'll be honest, there is a tiny bit of comping done in here, 
uh, because there were some more takes, which are now well compiled and gone history. But I got well, probably five takes of Mike. The singer here is Mike Packett from the band Naked Head, uh, a little bit of a super band out of uh, the Packets and Jake Cropley and the Monsmer family. And um, I did actually initially start working with a, a young rapper, so I thought, oh, well, it's cool, we'll give him a little bit of an opportunity for some exposure and what have you, and he uh, ghosted me really unwise, reached out to somebody else said that they would offer. And by then I'd come up with, I'd already thought of Mike right from the very beginning. I thought, oh, I don't know whether it's a fit for him. Um, and then I came up with the idea, which is the, she only loves me where I'm a gangster. Uh, and I suddenly realized, yeah, Mike could do that. And it's very much in his, in his ballpark. Uh, I reached out to him. He came back pretty well instantly. I said, yeah, sure, here's, here's what it's about. Here's the idea. She only loves me when I'm a gangster. He comes back really quickly. I think it might have been the next day and, and he'd got in his lyrics and it was all good. He came over this morning and within about an hour we'd got um, five or six takes of this lead all in one go, beginning to end, no breaks. If he stuffed up, and he did a few times, if he stuffed up just in case to keep going, we get to the end and we go again, we go again. And each take tends to get better until there's a certain point where they're not really getting better and then you stop. Uh, so do your lead in one go, verse, chorus, the whole lot, all in one go. The reason for this is that it keeps the flow. It puts everything, the right flow. When people punch in and out, they often end up with different tones as they punch in. So you get different lines having different tone, different level, different tone. Not good at all. Not good uh, because it's disconcerting. So take each in one go, beginning to end. Plus, on the chorus, we should rise. But where people are chopping and just doing little bits, they tend to be thinking technically and they don't have the flow of the song in their heart as they're singing it. And then it all sounds exactly the same. And do not do this. So sing your song beginning to end. It might take a little bit of practice to get to the point where you can do that, but that's all practice you need. If you want to be serious about this, that's what you've got to do. Because when you go on stage, you can't just sing two words, walk off, have a drink, go party, come back next week. You've got to deliver beginning to end. So once you've got that three or four good takes, you can compile. You can say, look, verse three was better on take four. And so then it's sort of pretty broad compiling. So that's like saying, okay, we'll chop there to there and just push that in. I'm not going to get into compiling here. I do as little of it as possible because I want the most natural result. I want the rough furry edges, the cool things that happen when we're just doing it in the moment. I then got a couple of backing lines. We went through as Mike was here and just said, which words do we want to pick at? With experience, I just went through and I said, now can I have this? Grabbed his lyric sheet, just underlined what he was to sing. So when he sung these lines, it was Dances. silence until Dances. he just delivered this. Water pistols. So Mike could hear the lead vocal. So he was getting this. The last song sung in my 2.0 and my water, water gun. gun. In my 2.0 and my water, water gun. gun. The girls in the right of holler, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right of holler, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's what he was doing. And we did, I think, three, but I dumped one of them. It wasn't as good as these two. Uh, these two matched better. It's important with these backing parts, if you're just going with two and going to pan them left and right, which is the easy way to go, they want to match fairly well because if you've got two different left to right, it doesn't sit very comfortably. So we got all that. That is cool. And then because I've spoken about it in the article, it's really good to get ad libs. Ad libs are the extra bits and pieces. And we got this. Oh. That's yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Great. Cool. So that gives us a little bit of cool off-the-cuff stuff. Uh, that was the second take. The first take was quite similar. He made it up on the spot and he was like, well, that was terrible. And I was like, that's quite funny. So he tied it up for the second one. We've now got our vocals ready to mix. Taking the time, if you rush that, 
it doesn't come through. If you can get harmonies, even better, but if you can't do harmonies, don't fuss on it. Uh, but it is really important. The ad-libs, these extra little bits, the backing parts, the ooh yeahs and all those sorts of things that, that come in songs, they are really very, very useful. Now, something you may notice here is that there is no tuning I am dead set against mellow tuning, which is a combination of auto-tune and melodyne. It kills vocals. You might go, oh, but I'm not perfectly in tune. Well, guess what? Frank Sinatra was never perfectly in tune either, and that's part of why he was such an amazing singer, because he knew how to move in and out of tune. I was in the car with my daughter last night, and then again this morning driving her to work, uh, and yesterday it was, um, I won't say who it was, it was some band who's so popular, and I was not enjoying listening to it, and it was so heavily auto-tuned, not in that sort of T-Pain kind of way, but in the, oh, no, we're not auto-tuning. It was like, my God. Everything sounded really thin and flat and, and inhuman. It wasn't interesting. There was no feeling of movement in it. And then this morning in the car, there was, oh, there was a, a Billy Joel song, and then an old Tom Jones song comes on. And Tom has a great voice, but you could hear him moving around pitch. But it feels enormous, not because Tom Jones is a big man, but because there's a great dynamic in there and his vocal was so lively. So if you're afraid, then simply put in more practice, get better at it. Don't use electronic tuning because it's only going to make your song sound worse. It makes you sound less present. And that less present means that people are more likely to walk away. Your job when you're singing is to grab people by the feelies and make them go, oh, you don't have to be perfectly in time. You sure don't want to be perfectly in tune. You want to be emotive to grab people by the... Go listen to Lou Reed. Lou Reed, in theory, should never have been allowed to sing. But Lou Reed is a powerfully compelling singer because he grabs you by the and you feel what he's about. This is super important. So we've got our vocal parts in. Daddy boy. And we'll start to put together a rough mix of this. Now, I encourage a five-step mix process. If you're not a mix engineer, I encourage first and foremost, absolute best solution at this point is to go to a mix engineer. Somebody who is both skilled and experienced, not somebody who just downloaded a copy of Reaper uh, and has stuck the word pro in front of their name. That's not skilled and not experienced. You need somebody who is going to see the big picture of what you're doing and work out how to help you sell it better. A great one will want to talk to you about your material before anything gets done, before pricing, before anything, and then maybe even ask you to redo some things so that it comes out better. You can get all skanky with your ego, or you can get on and follow the advice and learn and come out better on the other side. I encourage the latter. So a five-stage process. First stage is I always work out my reverb space. One of the problems with using a music bed is that it'll have its reverb already baked into it, which means that the reverb you're using and the reverb that they have used don't match. And then it's much harder to get those two to come together. Now I've semi-cheated here because I kept the reverb unit that was in for the music in here, uh, but I did change it a little bit because it worked great for the music, but not so much for the vocals. Uh, but I couldn't tell how it was going to work for the vocals because they weren't there when I wrote it. Uh, so reverb space. I have set up a reverb space here and whoop, that will be on F5. So if we pull our reverb in, just take it from the bus. And that's Hertz Multiplier. She only loved me when I'm gangster. Yeah, I'm packing plastic. Yo, you want some? Now, I always do my vocals first. Always. It's very tempting to start with the music and make that as loud as possible, but then you've got nowhere to go. Mixing is like filling a glass with beer. You know, you get that much in, and had you put more beer in, well, you can't. 
Now, beer, a good beer is supposed to have suds on top of it. So if you fill your beer right to the top, you've got beer up to here, where do the suds go? They don't. So people are disappointed they've got a flat beer. You've got to work out how to put the right amount of beer in and then have a nice foamy head. The size of foamy head tends to vary from country to country, um, but nonetheless, it should be there. If it's not there, you haven't done your job right as a beer pouring person. Music making is exactly the same. We've got to have all those elements there. So I will start with the vocals because that's the most important part and then we'll pull the music up into that space. So I've decided on my reverb. That's stage one. I spent a whole lot of time getting that reverb so that it feels right. So yeah. when it's Cause the All girls in. in the right holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. That it sounds better. We've got a, a better sense of presence. Not as good as if I were mixing the whole track, but it's better than not having reverb. Because dry vocals are just not that nice. Number two is that we need to set levels. Now I've already done that. Uh, that is a, simply a case of going through. We've got all our parts. And that's a bit hard. A lyrical prankster. Gangster. She only loves me when I'm 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 gangster. Rolling down the street from the gym of Ladies in the seat, they're all hip hop dancers. Blasting out the speed with my bling and crystals. No one says to me down, I got water pistols. Singing out to the last song sung. So that gives us a rough balance of what it's like. I do that first, or I encourage doing that first for when you're not using a, uh, a professional mix engineer. Just set your levels. Notice how nothing goes above zero dB. It's very tempting to come in and go, oh, well, I need to push that up. No, never push anything up. Unless you absolutely have to, don't push anything up. If your vocals are too quiet for your music, then consider pulling them back. See, that's got our levels good enough. We could actually print this now, bring it up to a total level, print it, and it would work. People could listen to this and, and get what the song's about. We can do better, but that's good enough if you've got everything done right to this point. If you're leaving it for the mix to sound good, you've not done your work beforehand and your mix will never work. We we'll then look at hands. So, most importantly, don't think that being wide, putting things all over the place is gonna make your music sound better. This music bed, if we just solo it, that's in mono. Sounds really good in mono. There's a bit of spread there. Okay, that's cool. But it's not excessive. There's a lot more depth in there. So you're better to have a mix which is fairly mono with great depth, like front to back, than you are to have stuff that's like spread all over the place. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the girls in the right of holler. Yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right of holler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not comfortable. So we need to think in terms of, well, okay, how do we make this feel like it's consistent, like everything belongs together? Yeah, yeah, the girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. She only loves me when I'm gangster. Gangster. I'm a number one gangster. Gangster. She only loves me when I'm gangster. Gangster. I'm a lyrical prankster. Gangster. She only loves me when I'm gangster. Now that's better. We've just come a bit under 50% and it keeps those backing parts in close to the lead part. They're out there, but it's in close, which means that reverb and other stereo nurse actually comes around the outside. So we get a nicer, more natural, deeper, wide sound than we do by putting them out there. And then the whole mix feels like flat, like a, a big curved screen, but flat. You don't want that at all, especially when you collapse to mono. Ping, I'm not sure what that's about, but it can wait. So I'm happy with that. Now we look at tone. This is the bit where we get producery with our plugins. I've already done a little bit of work. We'll pull up our thing. 
Uh, first thing that I will do here is, and I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time on this because there is a whole video which we will hopefully have linked to um, on mixing vocals. But we'll just kind of rush through here. What have we got? Rolling down the street in my timid out lancer. Ladies in the seat, they're all hip hop dancers. Blasting out the speed with my bling and crystals. No one says to me down, I got water. Pistols. Keeping my inputs and outputs roughly the same. Out to the last now I'm going to push this. This isn't. This next bit's not about how good it sounds, it's about how it feels. I'm looking for groove. The girls in the right yeah, 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 I'm the lyrical prankster. She only loved me when I'm gangster. Yeah, yeah how that's Patrick starting to really... Yo, you want some? Yeah. Cause the girls in the right yeah, 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 the girls in the right yeah, 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 the girls in the right yeah, yeah, So it's got a real, a real push in that. That's what I'm looking for. I've got extreme settings here now because I'm just looking for that groove. Now I can back things right down. Girls in the right yeah, yeah, yeah. She only loved me when I'm gangster. I'm a number one gangster. She only loved me when I'm gangster. I'm a lyrical prankster. She only loved me when I'm gangster. 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 Rolling down the street in my pimped out Lancer. Ladies in the seat, they're all hip hop dancers. Blasting out the speed with my bling and crystals. No. Now, this is called a leveling tool, and this is exactly what this is designed to do. You notice how, as he gets louder, there's more compression. As he's not so loud, there's less compression. Overall level is evened out. No need to spend as much time chopping things up and changing levels. There was a tiny bit of level changing with one part where I felt like a certain word just came out too loud. Uh, that's normal enough. Oh, says to me down, um, I got water pistols. Singing out to the last song sung in my 2.0 and my water gun. In my 2.0 and my water gun. The girls in the right of holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right of holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right of holler, yeah, yeah. I think that's probably good enough. Bearing in mind I'm in cans and nothing works out right in cans. That's more compression than I'd normally do, but in this case, I, th I think it's gonna work out quite nicely. We wanna sort of push a little bit hard there. I'm just gonna pull that back just yeah, yeah. a tiny the bit. The girls in the right of holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the lyrical pranks. I'm just working on the assumption that when we come to the mastering stage, we're gonna end up with a little bit more squash. And I don't want there to be too much squash to have his voice, voice sound squashed, because Mike's done a Great job here of delivering a uh, particular kind of character. When you listen to the whole song towards the end, hopefully you'll understand exactly what he's about. The whole thing is a joke. Um, I actually came up with the uh, the song title, the lead idea, um, sitting in an Indian restaurant with partner Jane, and she's commenting there were videos on the wall um, of uh, Indian pop singers and there's some guy dancing around in, in camo pants and waving a gun around like he's so... And uh, so we had a little bit of a conversation about that. And I was like, that's cool. It's like the idea that this boy could only be popular with girls if he, if he acted like he was all gangster. Uh, and that's when I realised that Mike was the, the man for the job because, well... The packets and naked heads specialize in these sorts of songs. So that's given us the compression there. I'm a big, big fan of echo and delay. If you do have slight tuning issues, which Mike does not, uh, then this is a great way of helping to solve that. Turn off any beat sync, never beat but sync. See, you love love me when I'm gangster. gangster. Yeah, yeah, I'm packing pack plastic. plastic. Yo, Yo, you, you want, want some? Yeah. Cause the girls in the right of holler, yeah, 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 the girls in the right of holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hear how his tuning improves straight away, and there's nothing wrong with his tuning here at all, but as soon as we put that little bit of chorusy on him, now I'm not putting a chorus on here, this is actually an echo, but as soon as we put this on here, he sounds more musical, because what's happening is that the modulation there is moving the tuning of those echoes around, which means that if we've got just the one voice, he's sort of here. Let's say perfect tune was here and he's sort of here. By putting the chorus on it, then we're moving across perfect tune so the ear normalizes it. He only love me when I'm gangster. I'm a number one gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. So I'm looking for tone and time 
not level. Work one step at a time. I'm a lyrical prankster. She only loves me when I'm gangster. 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 Rolling down the street in my pimped out lamps. The ladies in the seat, they're all hip-hop dancers. Blasting out the speed with my bling and crystals. No one says to me down, I got water pistols. Singing out to the last song sung in my 2.0 and my water gun. In my 2.0 and my water gun. The girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little prankster. She only loves me when I'm gangster. So the reason that I use the echoes here is two main things. One is that it fills the voice out. It gives us a lot more body and belly to that voice, which is great. Uh, it also creates a little bit of sense of space. Now this one I'm going to want fairly low, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit more than I had it, and that's good. Now I'm going to need to look at EQ, that's part of tone. Yeah, I'm packing plastic. Yo, you want some? Common to want a yeah. high pass. A man's voice, commonly somewhere around 80. You want to go to yeah. the point where... Because the girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the girls is still in the right will holler, yeah. But if there are plosives, which is a on the mic, then that will help get rid of them straight away. Uh, sometimes you want a fairly thin vocal, but a lot of the times you kind of don't, especially if you want the man to sound... Then you don't want to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right will holler. Yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right will holler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She only loves me. See that boxy kind of sound? That's common. On men, it will tend to be somewhere around here. When I'm gangster, pull that back a little bit. I'm Before you go adding treble and what have you, pull that back a little bit because it'll clarify what's up here. Number one gangster. She only loves me when I'm gangster. I'm a lyrical prankster. She only loved me when I'm gangster. 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 So hear how he just comes a little bit cleaner and clearer, a little bit more forward. That is good. Now I've got this pair of backing vocals here. These are here. If we just kill this for the moment, let's pop them up. Pop them yes, solo. Let's get the speed with my bling and crystals. Water pistols. I'm a water gun. I'm a water gun. These backing vocals. I'm going to pop these two together into a bus. It's possible to do this without bussing, but I like bussing. Bussing is brilliant. So, Bevox, always name them clear so we know exactly what's going, and they're still going to the vocal bus. So now, I've yeah, got that yeah, there. yeah. So we will look at what we're going to do. Now, I'm not going to do any more with them there. I'm going to process them as a pair because I want them to be together as one. Actually, I'm just going to pop that one up a little bit. Now, we're going to do roughly the same stuff. We're going to look at this compressor. Yeah, we've yeah, got yeah. Both of these happening at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gangster. 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 Cool. Gangster. Love me when I'm gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. Yeah, how that has quite a nice punch. That's what we want them to do, just to reinforce and emphasise those words. Gangster. Cool. Now that's that. And then we need to put them in space, which is front to back, not left to right. We've already done that. We need to put them in space front to back. 
which is going to be an echo. Again, turn your uh, BPM stuff off. Dances. Water pistols. Let's get this where we got I'm more happening. This may be too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, holla, yeah, yeah, yeah. She only love me when I'm gangster. I'm a number one gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. I'm a lyrical prankster. She only love me when I'm gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. At least in the cans, which always gives you the wrong sense of space, I actually quite like that. So what I did was took the time for the echo on the lead vocal and give or take doubled it. Uh, it felt like it was kind of nice. It's got a little bit more of a, a dubby kind of a thing. Actually, let's just... He only love me when I'm gangster. Mm. Yeah, 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 the girls in the right of hands. Splashing at the hot dance. Splashing at the speed with my fling and pistols. No one sits me down, I got water pistols. Singing out to the last song sung in my 2.0 and my water gun. In my 2.0 and my water gun. The girls in the right of holla, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, the girls in the right of holla, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, the girls in the right of holla, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, the girls in the right of holla, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the lyrical prankster. She only loves me when I'm gangster. Cool. So they're clearly in slightly a different place. Because it's the same singer, we, we need them to be behind, but even with a different singer. If we've got some girlines to come in, um, the Monsma girls say, I still would be putting them behind in this role. If they were lead singer, yes, they'd be in front, and Mike would be behind. So now we've got our main vocal set all running. Yeah, I'm packing plastic. Yo, you want some? Yeah. Cause the girls in the right of holla, yeah, 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 the girls in the right of holla, yeah, 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 the girls in the right of holla, yeah. I know what I forgot, which was EQ on this one. I should do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Gangster. 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 I actually want to make these Gangster. ones sound a little bit tougher. Gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So rather than, look, we've got our lead vocal being quite forward with, with brightness, and these I want to sound thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She only love me when I'm gangster. Gangster. I'm a number one gangster. Gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. Gangster. I'm a lyrical prankster. Gangster. She only love me when I'm 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 gangster. Yeah, you're staring at me, yeah. yeah. I'm your water boy, I'm your water boy. I'm your water boy, yeah. Squirt, squirt, squirt. I'm your water boy. Daddy boy. Right on holla, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the girls in the right on holla, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the girls in the right on holla, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the girls in the right on holla, yeah, yeah, yeah. So by changing the tone there, it didn't work quite the way I, I thought, but it rarely does. It was the feeling and then working out how to get there is that we've got a little bit more low end. I have pulled out that same sort of you know, honky, papery, cardboardy sound that we all tend to get with mics, but I've pulled back some of the treble. And so that means that it, it is going to sit behind, which is good, but it was going to sound more more bulky, more muscular uh, than the, uh, the lead, which is good. The lead's forward, this is back. Now we look at this ad. Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's and we want this to sound boy? mean. Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy, who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah, who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, okay. squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy, who's your daddy boy? I just did an EQ boy. before I forget. 
Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. Gangster. Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Cool. So that's really brought out the the the, the unpleasant meanness of <laughs> this fine fellow on your mic. And we will do something similar here. There is that second part, which I'm loath to let go of. It's clearer without it, but there's something about this that I actually find quite cool when we've got the both together. Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, uh, you staring at me? Yeah. I'm actually going to try something boy. different. I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. Yeah, gangster, yeah. I'm the water boy. I'm the water boy. Squirt, squirt. Water boy, yeah. Yeah, I'm gangster, yeah. I'm the water boy. I'm the water boy. Squirt, squirt, water boy, yeah. Now with the echo here, that's going to help pull that back. With the, the one before, I didn't put an echo on it because I want it to be, like, in your face. Whereas this is, like, chatter, almost like a, a bunch of, of other behind this tool uh, who are doing the whole kind of thing along with it. You know, typical bully boys. Yeah, me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Okay, now let's look at maybe jamming the two together. What a boy, who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah, who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, I'm gangster, yeah. I'm the water boy. I'm the water boy. Squirt, squirt, water boy, yeah. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your Daddy boy. Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Who's your daddy boy? Yeah, you staring at me? So we spend a bit of time on that because it's important. Yeah, you staring at me? Yeah. Who's your water boy? I'm your water boy. Yeah, squirt, squirt. I'm the water boy. Now I've got the vocals all in a bus, which means that all our vocal parts come into this one point. So no one says to me down. I got water, water pistols. pistols singing out to the last song sung in my 2.0 and my water again. In my 2.0 and my water again. The good that rolling this off again helps clear the bottom end. Because uh, there's there's nothing useful down girls there. Girls in the rattle holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the rattle holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the rattle holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the girls in the rattle holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the lyrical prankster. She only loved me when I'm gangster. Yeah, I'm packing plastic. Yo, you want some? Yeah. Putting a little dip somewhere around 1k can girls really the help. Girls in the right yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right yeah, yeah, yeah. And then generally pulling the whole thing up a little bit on the treble. Remember, I lowered the treble on the backing parts, 
pulling it up a little bit here so it ends up roughly where it was before, but by making movements on the bus together, it helps bring all those vocals in together. Oh, am I war again? In my 2.0, oh, am I war again? The girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the lyrical prankster. Now, it's very tempting to go through and start making changes to the music bed, going, oh, I'm gonna, you know. Do not do this. Work on the assumption, if you downloaded that bed because it sounded good in the first place, leave it alone. You start messing with it, especially if you go trying to add a whole lot more bass so it's more blammin' man, you will actually make your track sound super quiet and really, really amateur. So go, if, if it sounded good enough to use in the first place, leave that mix alone. It may get some minor changes in the master, but leave the mix alone. Now we want to find a point where oh, yeah. these bounce. The girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. She only love me when I'm gangster. I'm the number one gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. Now, bearing in mind I'm in headphones and I do not like doing this, I want to keep the um, the vocal just a tiny bit above the, the music bed because if the music's too loud, when we go to master them, then it will actually push the voice down. We don't want that. The voice still needs to be in front. Well, do this then it doesn't make for a better song, it makes for a way worse song. She only loved me when I'm gangster. She only loved me when I'm gangster. from earlier in the song. Rolling down the street in the Timber Gap Lands And ladies in the seat, there are hot dances I'm blasting out this beat with my fling and pistol No one says to me down, I got water pistols Singing out to the last song I'm singing in my 2.0 and my water gun In my 2.0 and my water gun The girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah Yeah, the girls in the right will holler, yeah, yeah, yeah Yeah, the girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. Ideally, I might separate those parts and pull maybe the yeah, yeah, yeahs up, but I'm not going to here. Uh, it's good enough. The girls in the right of holler, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a lyrical prankster. She only loves me when I'm gangster. If I'm really concerned, I can put a compressor on just the vocal bus and pull it up a little bit, push it all together, but I, I'd rather not. Yeah, I'm packing plastic. Yo, you want some? Yeah. For the moment, I think that works out fairly well. So that is our mix we've gone through, setting up the reverb. I didn't do that with you here because it takes time. I'm really fussy about that. So get the space in which this is going to happen. Remember, if we turn this off. Oh, the girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The girls in the right will holler, yeah, 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 yeah. The vocals now sound more present. They sound fuller. They've got a nicer tune and tone to them all from reverb, so really important. You learn when you're setting up your reverb not to overdo it, because remember I've got echoes in there and they push into and feed that reverb. We set up our levels, we have tweaked them, but we started with a sense of, yeah, look, this is how this balances and it could go out that way. We've worked our pans without overdoing anything at all. Um, we've worked on just the general tone, which is compression, EQ, all that sort of stuff. Now, the only thing left to do is to finalize the project. People will say mastering, but I'm not keen on that as a term. So we'll open up this little box. I'm going to go super simple because remember I said we're going to make a, a, uh, another one of these on the mastering thing. So the first thing that we can do is pull in a compressor. And I'm going to do the same as what I did before. Full threshold, very high ratio, and find how to make this song groove. That's all I'm looking for at this stage, groove. No 
That's probably not too bad. Again, don't like doing this in cans. So now we come back to because this is rappy, I, I, I want it to be a little heavy handed. I think that's working nicely. Again, I wouldn't like to do that in um, in headphones. She only love me when I'm gangster. She only love me when I'm gangster. A little bit of tape stuff. There's the saturation knobs always in. Now I look at my gangsta. levels. I've got about 3 dB spare here. Cool. It's sounding good. It's good enough to go right now, which means that we're winning. So I'm just going to push 3 dB in here. She only love me when I'm gangster. I could just use the input gain there, but I've got this one on the front because it gives me more control. Now that's roughly where I want everything to be. So it's probably pretty good. Again, I would never want to make these decisions in cans, uh, but it's probably about right. That's an hour and 10 of your time and you've seen all these parts put together. So we got our music bed. In this case, I built that, but we brought it in. We made sure that we were in time so that anything that we do is going to be in the right spot. We've got a decent microphone and interface, even though they are the cheapest in the market. We've got decent gear and we used it right. And so we got nice basic takes. Their vocals were clean enough for this by a long shot. Um, didn't take too long to do. Yes, we had the advantage of Mike Packett being far more experienced than the average person who might be doing this at home. Uh, but nonetheless, that comes with experience. You know, Mike's got that through playing with the packets. Uh, and then, of course, he's done a lot more of this kind of recordy stuff with, uh, with Naked Head. Uh, so he had, had an idea. And what was wonderful was that when he came in, he was a bit like about because he hasn't done this sort of thing for a little while and we haven't worked together directly even though I did all the naked head stuff I didn't really interface with him at that stage uh, and he was a bit sort of unsure about you know his, and you know put him he, he put himself at ease once he realized what was going to happen and then each take it improved where I said hey can we do this he just did it no sort of ego arguing and I'm too cool for this because he knew all along that his job was to tell the story you know he'd written the story of you know, this guy who feels like he has to be all kinds of and, and he's gadding about in his, uh, his two-litre Lancer with his water pistol trying to be homey so that the girl likes him. And Mike's telling that story and getting it across and listening himself when the playback comes back because we played back after every take was made to, for him to go, I want to do more of this or more of that. And so he engaged further and further. So that's made everything that we got work really, really well. So once we got through that, I then went through and just tied it up, got rid of things that I didn't want. So there's nothing lying around in this session that shouldn't be here. Uh, everything's tied it up, a little bit of compiling, uh, which is just sort of saying, okay, this verse is better than that. But the only bit that I bought was the bit in the middle. I, it took him quite a lot of goes to actually get that right. Um, 
don't know why, maybe maybe it was being made up, I'm not really sure, but it just, it, it took a few goes for him to get that right. Uh, and then when it was like, yeah, that's good, they were, he was trying to deliver it right, but then we just got a lot of plosives and it just didn't work, and then that one worked. So that was flown in and, and compiled into the one, ready to mix, tied it up, just got rid of noises and breaths and stuff like that. Nothing heavy-handed at all. I would rather it stay in than to make it weird with um, with over-processing. And then we go through this process of five steps, which is get your reverb, what space you want this track to happen in, set your levels roughly, set your panorama roughly. Remember, we're looking more for depth than we are for width. Set up your tone and your adjustments, and that in this case included making sure that we got better depth with our echoes, and then just finalizing it, bringing it up so that it's going to be the right kinds of levels. And that is now ready to print off. I'm not going to print this off yet uh, because it's mad to print it off today. I really need to overnight this and come back tomorrow and go, is this where I want this to be? Does this, does this feel right? Can I make it a tiny bit better? Not with all kinds of technical messing around, but just like, is there something that, that I've been a little bit heavy handed with? Plus, I'm going to be using speakers, they're not these, and then that will be run off and that's it, it goes off to the client. The client in this case, well, it's a higher hertz of the client, so this is the video, um, but nonetheless, Mike is going to get a copy of this to show off on his socials once the, uh, the video has come out. Please, again, there is a written article that goes with this. Read that, watch this, read that, watch this. You're gonna to need to do a little bit of backwards and forwards because there's quite a lot in here. Every time you shave a bit off one of the parts of this process and go, ah, I don't need to do that, I'm too cool for that, or, or I know better, which is the big problem. I read somebody in a forum said, okay, if that was actually Andrew Sheps or CLA, maybe, maybe that's a good piece of advice for you, but maybe it wasn't relevant for you. But if it was some idiot who has no skills, no experience, do not listen to them. This formula will always give you a workable result. If you want to do better, then either learn to be a tracking and mixing engineer yourself or bring in somebody who this is their thing. Focus on bringing in the right people whose puzzle pieces fit yours. Where you get to, no one can ever tell, but we can tell that you'll fail if you don't think like a professional from the beginning and don't get a clear process and work with people who are at least as good, if not better than you. Super, super important power tip for you. If you have any questions about the process, ask them on down below. So really get out there, practice, and most importantly, have a great day.